So we will be doing a drawing skill builder today for colored pencil. So colored pencils are just like regular pencils. You sharpen them, um, they become dull, they get tiny. Um, you can use the sharpeners on the wall or you can use a handheld sharpener such as this one to sharpen them. Um, sometimes it's great for them to be super sharp so you can get into tiny areas, but sometimes it's better for them to be a little rounded and dull um, to get bigger areas. So. What we're going to do here is you are going to layer colors in this first box, layering colors on top of each other. So you want to pick a color, so maybe I'll just do some yellow here. Yellow is kind of hard to see on the camera, but I'll do a few examples. And then pick another color to layer, it means go on top of. So I'll take this teal and I'll layer a little bit on top of the yellow and then I'll make the teal kind of go out where I didn't color any yellow so I can see the difference of what happens when I layer a color on top of another color. When you layer colors, it adds a lot of dimension to your piece. You can actually mix your colors. So if you notice here, I did yellow and then I did this kind of tealy blue and right here, where I layered them, it looks a little green because the colors are mixing together. So that's how you can um, really, really play a lot with color if you're into that sort of thing. So there's a little bit of layering. I want you to do at least two examples in this box so you can tell a little bit. And if you want to do more, obviously do more because it is kind of fun to play to see what you can get. And you can even layer more than twice. So maybe you do three different layering techniques and see what happens. For instance, here I did sort of a pink and then I did an orange here. Now I can even put on even more of like a yellowy orange on top of that and see what happens. It's really just experimenting to see what you can come up with. And that's how you start to create really smart decisions in your artwork. All right, so that's how we layer colors. So in, in this next box, you're gonna do directional lines or hatching. So that's pretty easy. This is um, a really nice technique to add a kind of texture. So you can pick any color and you want to pick one direction and make your mark. So this is a great way to show maybe movement if something's going fast. Or this is a great way to show wind or maybe feathers. You can do it really soft. You can also put in new colors with it. This might be a good way if you really want to try and tackle drawing hair. So it's just taking a stroke going one direction over and over and over again. Okay, so that is directional lines are hatching. Next is cross hatching. So same idea. You make the lines go one direction, but then you cross and make them go the other direction. So this is sometimes good for shading. If you want an area to look a little darker, you can just go over. Okay, cross hatching, and then we have scumbling over here. Scumbling is, is really fun. So I'm gonna take a few colors here. For so you're gonna start, and scumbling is almost like scribbling. You go in a circular motion. And when I scumble, so it doesn't look so much like scribbles, I layer in colors. And so some areas, if you want it to look darker, you press harder. If you want it to look lighter, you press lighter. But you just kind of keep going in this circular pattern. And eventually, it ends up looking really soft and pretty. So I like to scumble, like if I'm maybe drawing a um, landscape and I want to do some trees. You can do a little scumbling in that. And just play with the depth and the color. Experiment and find out how you like it. Good for clouds as well. So this part's very important. I can create value using pencil. So value means lights and darks. So on this side you want to do light, this side you want to do dark, and then all here in the middle is your medium values. So pick your color. I always like to start dark. So you want to press hard 
when you are coloring. To make things dark, you want to kind of layer with the same color. Right up here we layered with different colors. So I can go in a different direction, go on top, and that's making all this look even darker. And I can layer multiple times as long as I have to to get it as dark as I want. What you don't want to do is press so hard you break your pencil. That's not proper technique. Okay, so you get it as dark as you need to get it by layering and then move along and release your pressure. So get lighter and lighter. Sometimes it helps if you scoop your, scoot your fingers back on your pencil. And just a light, light touch. Okay, and if you get too light too soon, go back, darken some up. Let it transition slowly across this whole box here. What you don't want to do is have it be dark, then light, and then get a little dark again. You, the goal is to go dark to light, softly and slowly. So by the time you hit this word light, it should be barely anything coming down. Okay, and I'm not judging if you stay in your lines there. Just make it as pretty as possible. But that's how you create value. So if you want something to look more realistic, it's going to have lights and darks. And that's how you do it. Okay? Okay, so we're going to use this idea of value and apply it down here to these forms. Okay, it says use the primary colors and value to create the illusion of form. Illusion, it's playing a trick on our eye. These things are not three-dimensional. We're drawing them to make them look 3D. I can't actually pick these up, right? They're flat. So, all right, so what I'm going to do, you want to pick where your light is coming. So maybe my light is coming from this direction, right? So it's going to hit this circle here, maybe right around here. So this is, this is going to be lighter, this is going to be darker, okay? Now when you shade in a circle, I like to follow the circular um, shape. So I don't like to shade straight up and down. I, that would be good for maybe the cube. But for a circle, I like to kind of outline and follow that circle. So it's a little weird at first. And then you just kind of keep, you get a flow. Okay, so back here is going to be dark. So that means I press harder and I keep going over it. Get my dark value. And then you want to go into your medium values. And you always want to kind of just keep and check with yourself if you need to go back, go back, fix it. Getting as light as I can. And usually on a sphere there's like sort of like a circle of light. Okay, but you should be seeing darks and lights there. Okay, so yellow. This will be a little tricky on the camera. Maybe I want the light to come in from this way again. So my light side will be over here. So over here, I will color in straight up and down this time because the shape is okay for that. Pressing hard. And getting lighter as I go across. All right, now here on the top of a cylinder, it's kind of weird. We go dark on this side. It's the opposite, but that's what always is correct. Okay, so dark to light on the top there. And then finally we have blue as a primary color for the cube. Swimming in here, my top will be my lightest. So I'll color that side in light. Cubes are a little different. Um, this will actually be my darkest because it's facing away from the light. The light's shining onto here on the top. It's not shining onto this part. This part's facing me. So this part is your darkest value. I like to kind of outline my shapes before I color. It helps me stay in the lines. And then here on this plane, on this side, you want this to be sort of a medium value. And this would all change if your light was coming in from the bottom, right? Because then this would be your light value. This would be a darker value. So you just want to be able to tell the difference, like dark, medium, light. Dark, medium, light. Dark, medium, light. Okay?
So this is your skill builder on colored pencil.